In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect a intelligent Navisworks model that uh, contains a lot of information that comes from Ship Constructor. For example, um, when you select all these parts, you have all these properties that come from Ship Constructor. But occasionally, there's times that you need a, even more information that's managed in a different Excel file because <laughs> we all use Excel files in our shipyards. So I'm going to show you how you can have a, an Excel file that is um, using whatever template in your organization but has some information that you want to display in Navisworks. And it will be displayed in uh, properties which will allow you to use all the features in Navisworks such as selection sets and filtering and appearances and so forth. So for my example, if you actually go to uh, the attached files in my blog, uh, there's three files that I've attached in my um, uh, package. So it has this Navisworks linked Excel, which is in essence this Excel file, as well as uh, unit two, uh, which is a Navisworks file, which is the raw file. And then the final version of the file will, with uh, the attributes linked is this U02 linked to Excel. So first we have to get our Navisworks set up uh, so that we will be able to read that information into Navisworks. So this is a, a typical um, header. I'm uh, unfortunately not able to use real client data here uh, for uh, reasons that I'm sure you understand. So this is just something that I uh, kind of just put together. In essence, it has a part name and has some other attributes that I uh, want to display. If it has additional properties, don't worry, it can have you know, many more properties. We are going to def decide which properties we want to display in Navisworks. So even though there's could be 10 or 15 different properties, we can choose the handful of properties we want to uh, display. Also, I'm using part name here. Uh, ideally, you want to use some kind of identifier. Part GUID is actually the best. Um, but if you're doing uh, for something, for example, uh, what some of our clients do is uh, using welds and you'll have a weld tag which is unique uh, those are the best um, but part names if you use identical parts uh, using the part name is not a good identifier and therefore uh, will not get you the information you need so this is just a, an example so first of all uh, you'll see that uh, the third row is where the columns actually start because usually there's some kind of header information and some general inf um, general information that's part of this Excel file. So the very first thing is that we have to create a, a different sheet that only contains uh, the information that we want to display. Uh, so I've already created it here uh, by linking the information from the source into this other sheet. And the way that I did it is, um, which I'll just go through really quickly, if you just click a different sheet, you name that to whatever you want. Uh, you can go uh, equals, uh, select the page that you want um, to get the information, select the first uh, column, which is the header, and hit enter. And as you can see, it gets part name. And if you click on it, you drag it uh, for however many columns. It will get you the names of the columns of the sh source sheet. And then you can click this again here and drag it down and it will get all the properties. So this is just pulling information from, from the source page. So what uh, people have been doing is that on your company, company template, you would already have this um, template uh, or sh sheet already set up and it would automatically populate with the information that's in the source. So uh, from a standard operating procedure, nothing would have to change for when this information is actually populated. Uh, in this case, we're going to use uh, the waveform Navisworks because I already uh, set this up. So if we go ahead and start up uh, our Navisworks, um, this has nothing linked to it. This is just a normal Navisworks file that was generated from Ship Constructor. As you can see, it has uh, the Ship Constructor tab and all the properties. So in essence, what we're going to do is add another property tab here with the properties that are extracting uh, the information from the Excel file. So you first want to click on Data Tools. And in essence, we're creating a, a, a new link. 
Um, so we want to create a new link. You want to name this link, and we'll just call it uh, Waveform Navisworks um, Excel. And this is the, the name, this could be whatever name you want. This is the name that will be displayed uh, in the tab when we're completed. Then you have to pick uh, ODBC driver. Don't really need to know what that is. Uh, but you'll want to pick uh, the Excel driver because we're linking to an Excel file. Um, this is the same strategy that if you did want to link to a database as well, uh, which I've shown in other blog posts, uh, that you can connect right to the Ship Constructor database. Uh, but in this case, we're using Excel. And now you want to set up the Excel uh, driver. And the first thing is that we need to select the workbook, which is the, the Excel sheet uh, that we want to get. Uh, so you want to get uh, the file that I've actually attached, which is the Navisworks link to Excel, uh, Excel file. You click OK, click OK again, and it puts some st uh, string in here. Never have to modify it if you don't want. Uh, it's something to note, it, it actually will always go to the path that you've selected. So if it's on a network drive and it gets op updated automatically uh, from a different stakeholder or yourself, uh, when you reopen up Navisworks, it'll repopulate that information if you want. The next thing that we have to do is we have to uh, select the, um, uh, the the workbook or the sheet that we actually want. And if you go to my blog and you can copy and paste uh, the string, in essence, what the string does is it's, it's saying that it's selecting all items that are in the sheet. It is looking at the sheet called uh, Waveform Navisworks. So if we go back to the Excel, uh, it's looking for this tab. So if I was uh, named it differently, if I did, had a different tab, if I actually wanted the information from sheet one, I would replace that with sheet one. Make sure you keep uh, the dollar sign there because that's required. Then we're specifying that we want to uh, link the Navis or the Excel part name column. So this Navisworks part name column, uh, which is uh, this na this name. So if it's a different name, if it's a part good or well tag, it would be a different name. With the ship constructor property, which is the ship constructor property here, and the part name that's under the ship constructor um, tab. So it's looking for the way that it's going to build the mapping is that for every part. Uh, that has the same part name here as the Excel, it will go and get the properties um, from that row. So that's how we're actually building the link between the Navisworks item and the Excel. So that's pretty much done. So the next thing is that we have to pick the fields that we want to display. So if you click on it and list um, the field names, which these field names should be associated to uh, the column names here. And the display names here is what is it gets displayed here. So if you have a different name that is um, that you want to display in Excel, you're, you're able to do that. So it doesn't have to have the same name. It just by default uh, does that. Uh, so after that, you just click OK. And then you can see that it created this waveform Navisworks Excel. So now we want to make sure that it's checked and we want to click OK. So usually this would work uh, right away or it actually might work. Sometimes what happens is because you have the Excel file open, um, it will not work. So what you would have to do is that you would have to uh, close the Excel um, and then reopen Navisworks and everything would work. But just to kind of give you an idea. So right now, uh, you can kind of see that it added a new tab, and it'll have the properties from that. So as I select different items, it will give me the information uh, that is part of Excel. So we've already linked the Navisworks model to the Excel, and it's populating the information from, um, uh, from the Excel file. Uh, so you can now use normal Navisworks uh, features by creating selection sets and appearances and, and even timeline, if that uh, makes sense. Um, in this case, I have my selection tree set up, which if you don't, it's uh, here. And then 
it actually added uh, the item, the waveform Navisworks Excel. So I'm not going to select it because sometimes there is a performance issue and it really all depends on how big your Excel file is. Uh, so what usually happens is that every time you select an item, it's actually searching the Excel for all those properties. And you can sometimes know, notice that there's a slight lag when you select these items, uh, but it really all depends on the size of your uh, Excel file. But when you do something larger, like a search set or uh, one of these uh, uh, selections that are already preset, uh, the performance can actually degrade quite uh, substantially. So what I recommend is to create an NWD file, which has additional benefit that you can give this NWD file to someone that has freedom uh, and they don't need access to the Excel file. It's all encapsulating. So you don't want to create the NWD from the traditional save as. And the reason being is that it would not include these properties. Uh, the proper way of doing it is to go to the output tab and click this NWD and then make sure this embedded database property is selected. Uh, if that is selected, when you click OK, you can set the, your file name and it will actually create the Navisworks file. So it will take a little bit longer than usual because it's uh, extracting the information from the Excel file and, and encapsulating it into the NWD. So in essence, at the end of it, you will get uh, something similar to what I showed at the beginning of uh, the video, which is uh, this here. So if we go to the section tree here, um, you'll notice that the performance is quite quick or a little bit quicker as well as has uh, the same uh, properties selections and then you'll be able to even select uh, the items uh, in here so it's kind of um, hard to see here so if we actually um, make everything transparent a bit and make it gray and now is when you select these items, you can kind of uh, uh, see it a little bit better uh, of the, the items that are being selected. So uh, hopefully that was useful.